Coming up, severe weather possible tomorrow, and Coach Cal meets the Razorbacks. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. The weather and the search for a new UK basketball coach could be the big stories tomorrow. First, let's talk about the potential for severe storms. Meteorologist Cameron Aaron joins us now with more on this first alert weather day. Cameron. Yeah, Steve, some good news. No weather worries as you go to bed this evening so you can sleep peacefully. We are tracking a few light showers and some patches of dense fog, but no severe weather issues. As we close out your Wednesday up on the radar, we are overcast. Also a little bit soggy in some areas, zooming into a few light showers in Pulaski County, moving into Rock Castle, also in Jackson and Estill counties at this hour. And a few more light sprinkles close to I-64 for Rowan County, moving into Morgan County at this hour. But notice as we zoom out, we are tracking this upper level low producing some severe weather today from Louisiana through Florida and this weather system is moving into our direction. So we do have a level two slight risk of severe weather from Mount Vernon to Hazard to Pikeville and back to the north. A level three enhanced risk over far northeast Kentucky pushing into Ohio also into West Virginia. But again this evening no severe weather issues possibly a few showers maybe some patches of dense fog and we stay warm overnight lows in the middle to lower 60s and a few upper 50s as well. More details on that severe weather chance coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. Former UK coach John Calipari was introduced tonight in Fayetteville as the new head basketball coach at Arkansas. WIMT's Nate Johnson joins us now with more on that as the search for UK's next coach continues. Nate. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I got to say, Red, uh, it looks a little weird on John Calipari, but the deal is done. He's officially the head coach for the Razorbacks, and he made his first appearance in Fayetteville today. Here's Coach Cal on what helped him decide to come to Arkansas. We had a priest with us, a Catholic priest. He gave mass one morning in his room, and I said to him, Father, I got to decide what I'm going to do here one is Arkansas, the other is Kentucky. And he told me, go for an hour walk and have in your mind, you're the Arkansas coach. And then on the way back, that you're the Kentucky coach. And tell me, you, you'll see what moves your heart and what you want to do. And I did that. And I'll be honest, when I thought about coming here and building this program and making it something special, it got me excited. Well, we'll have more from Arkansas coming up here in sports, but Steve, sounds like Coach Cal excite, is excited about the uh, new opportunity. It definitely does, Nate, and I agree. He does look weird in red. Well, since rumors began to swirl about Coach Cal leaving Kentucky, fans have been sharing their personal stories about meeting the now former head coach. Tonight, we're hearing from one fan turned friend about what the Calipari family means to her. As Samantha Valentino shows us, a cake that she baked more than a decade ago was the start of a lifelong bond. The first day I ever met him in 2012, we were on the elevator and my face was twitching. I was so nervous. After Kentucky won the 2012 NCAA championship, Brandy Romine, owner of Happy as a Lark Cakes, baked a trophy for coach John Calipari. Little did she know that moment would not only take her career to the next level, it would jumpstart a lifelong connection with the family. It really did um, change my life and that's what makes it also hard is I know that he has changed so many lives, not just the athletes, so many people in our community. A tweet from Coach Cal landed Brandy's cake pops on CBS Sports. Then in 2019, Ellen Calipari asked Brandy to make his 60th birthday cake. The two have been thick as thieves ever since. My husband started calling us twins because we would say the exact same thing. Through the years, Brandy says she's realized the man she was so nervous to meet back in 2012 is just a good person. It is funny though, I just said to my husband, I said, isn't this the straight, it's like the twilight zone sometimes because I forget who they are and they make you feel that way when you're around them. You don't feel like this is one of the most famous people in the entire state. That's why she says seeing the Calipari's leave Kentucky is hard for her to accept. But after her failed attempts to stop Ellen from getting on that plane to Arkansas. But there's no Costco there. 
She's happy to see her friends doing what they feel is best for them. Arkansas is really getting a wonderful family and I hope that they go there and they find people around them that love them and appreciate them. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. And as the search for UK's next head coach continues, you can always find the latest updates and, and get news alerts sent to your phone inside the WYMT News app and on WYMT.com. A very quiet night as far as the search for the next coach goes. We'll see what tomorrow holds. Police charged a man with two counts of kidnapping following an incident in Knott County. Police arrested David Matthews after a manhunt lasting from mid-morning to early afternoon today. Two schools were on lockdown as a result. Trooper Matt Gayhart says the intensity of a situation increases when schools are involved. Uh, anytime we involve a school in, in our investigations, we want to excel the process and make sure we get it done as quickly as possible. School officials say they were able to dismiss students on time. Matthews was taken to the Kentucky River Regional Jail. And Gayhart says police are continuing to investigate, to investigate what led up to all this. The Pike County Health Department is working with partners to promote suicide prevention awareness. Pike County Public Health Director Tammy Riley says Pike County, Pike County alone, has seen eight suicides in the last 30 days. That number matches the number of total suicides in Pike County all last year. Riley says there's an obvious need for promoting resources available in the county, saying the state has also been pushing for better mental health access by creating the 988 crisis line. The Pike County Health Department is currently working with the Judge Executive's Office, the Pike County Coroner, and Mountain Comprehensive Care's Crisis Prevention Center. Um, we, we have some upcoming community activities, likely a mental health first aid training, um, some billboards and outreach. You can see more about the crisis line and the steps for prevention on our website. If you or someone you know needs help with mental health, addiction, or suicidal ideation, call or text 988. Kentucky lawmakers will soon return to Frankfurt to finish the 2024 regular session. They will likely look to override some of Governor Andy Beshear's vetoes, including House Bill 5. The controversial bill is also called the Safer Kentucky Act. Advocates say it cracks down on crime, but opponents worry about the effects it could have, especially on the state's homeless population. I think uh, we lack resources in the state of Kentucky. I know there's definitely a lack uh, for safe and affordable housing. Supporters of the bill say it will cut back on gun violence and other crimes due to harsher punishments. Arizona House Republicans halted Democrats' efforts to repeal an 1864 abortion rule that would bring a near total ban to the state. The Arizona Supreme Court ruled it can take effect in a decision that overrides Arizona's current abortion ban at 15 weeks into a pregnancy. The developments in Arizona are having a ripple effect nationwide, bringing abortion back into the national discussion and making it a presidential campaign issue. CBS's Christian Benavidez reports from Miami. Former President Donald Trump said an Arizona law that criminalizes nearly all abortions goes too far. And I'm sure that the governor and everybody else are going to bring it back into reason and that will be taken care of, I think, very quickly. Trump also defended the U.S. Supreme Court's 2021 ruling overturning Roe v. Wade, clearing states to ban or restrict abortion. President Biden, who has vowed to restore Roe v. Wade, was asked today what his message is to Arizonans. Elect me. I'm in the 20... So 20th century, 21st century. The remarks come the day after Arizona Supreme Court found that officials may enforce an 1864 law criminalizing all abortions except when a woman's life is at stake. The law provides no exceptions for rape or incest. This is a devastating decision that will have huge consequences, and I immediately called on our legislature to repeal this, ba this ban. On Wednesday, the GOP-controlled Arizona House quickly gaveled out of session after lawmakers attempted to repeal the controversial abortion law. Democrats, aided by one GOP lawmaker, were stopped by the Republican majority. Arizona's law could go into effect this summer, forcing patients to travel to neighboring states with less restrictive laws. Cristian Benavides, CBS News. 
A lower court in Arizona will review the abortion law's constitutionality. Meanwhile, Planned Parenthood says it will continue to provide abortion services in the state up to 15 weeks for a short period of time. A federal judge has sentenced a Florida woman to a month in prison for selling the diary of President Biden's daughter to Project Veritas in 2020. 41-year-old Amy Harris must also serve three years of probation. Harris pleaded guilty to stealing Ashley Biden's belongings after moving into a Florida home where the daughter of the now president had recently lived. Ashley Biden had temporarily stored some personal belongings in the home. President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden hosted a state dinner in honor of Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and his wife at the White House tonight. Kishida thanked the Bidens for the hospitality, for visiting Hiroshima, and talked about the large number of Japanese immigrants to the U.S. that came from Hiroshima. Kishida said the Pacific Ocean has brought together the U.S. and Japan like never before and that they will further elevate the relationship. House Speaker Mike Johnson is working to keep his job meeting with Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. Greene has threatened to remove Johnson from his post. WYMT Washington News Bureau reporter Brendan Cullerton has the latest on that. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene has been slamming House Speaker Mike Johnson for weeks for passing bills with Democratic support. Johnson says he has little choice, having the smallest House majority in history. 185 Democrats, 134 Republicans. That was the vote tally for the most recent spending bill passed by the House of Representatives. Speaker Mike Johnson says Republicans are not in a position to unilaterally dictate policy. We've got a one vote margin right now. Um, this is an historic moment. There's never been anything like this. And at the same time, uh, we Republicans only have that majority in one house. But as soon as the spending bill passed, Marjorie Taylor Greene said she does not feel Johnson is fighting hard enough for Republicans. This is a Democrat bill um, and it lost the majority of the majority. That's the bill that was passed. Um, Speaker Johnson gave up every ability to negotiate and fight for border security today. Taylor Greene has since doubled down on her position, slamming Johnson in a letter to Republican colleagues Tuesday. Johnson says Republican need to save sweeping changes for after the November election and shutting down the government won't help them win. I don't think that would be helpful to us from a political standpoint for the Republican Party to continue to govern, to maintain, keep, and then grow our majority in November. I thought that would have been a great hindrance to it. Johnson says he will not comment on private conversations with Taylor Greene. When the House removed Kevin McCarthy as Speaker, it devolved into chaos, unable to pass any legislation for weeks. In Washington, I'm Brendan Cullerton. The Environmental Protection Agency announced a new national drinking water standard to protect Americans from toxic chemical pollution. The new rule requires water systems to monitor, reduce, and report high levels of some of the most common toxic and chemicals known as forever chemicals. Exposure to high levels of these chemicals has been linked to cancers, liver, and heart issues and developmental issues for infants and children. This is the first ever national legally enforceable drinking water standard. The price of a postage stamp could go up again in the next few months. The U.S. Postal Service filed a notice with the Postal Regulatory Commission yesterday. It's recommending raising the price of first-class mail forever stamps from 68 cents to 73 cents. Stamp prices just went up this year in January. If the change is approved, it would take effect on July 14th. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, need something to do this weekend? We'll tell you where you can check out some young, talented actors. Plus, we are tracking a strong storm threat tomorrow. Your Thursday forecast after this break.